Oh. What? Is there, is there something, something different about me today? Actually, yes there is. Well spotted. Hello people of the internet. Welcome back to my channel. And today, I'd like to sit down and tell you a little story. It's a story about my first ever trip to America, more specifically to Georgia, more specifically to a racetrack in the state of Georgia called Road Atlanta, and more specifically a race that takes place at that racetrack called Road Atlanta called Petit Le Mans. Now anyone who knows me even vaguely a tiny little bit will know that I am, I'm one of these people that makes plans all constantly. And one thing I've always liked planning are race car trips, but inevitably, no matter how enthusiastic I start out with in these plans, they never end up coming to fruition. And there's two very good reasons why I've never followed through on any of these ambitious bucket list race car trip plans. Number one, my brain's a bit shit and anxiety sucks. And number two, quite simply, I've never really been in the position financially to do so, or more accurately, I've thought I was not going to be in a position financially to do it, and ended up talking myself out of it way beforehand, which relates back to point one, the whole brain bollocks, anxiety, rubbish bit. But earlier this year, when a plan was floated by a bunch of pals of mine from the Motorsport 101 podcast community to go to the Petit Le Mans 10 hour endurance race out at Road Atlanta in Brazeltown, Georgia, the United States of America, I figured, do you know what? I'm not gonna let either of those stop me. I've got time to save up. I will save up as much as possible. I'm doing the best I ever have done in my freelance work, which touch wood is absolutely amazing. So I was able to save enough for the trip in about two or three months. So I was able to book all my flights, get my tickets for the race, sort out Airbnb and accommodation with the others, do all the other sort of bits and bobs necessary for traveling to the USA for the first friggin' time in my life. And then I just had to avoid being massively anxious and stressed about it for months and months, which I mostly managed, except for the part when people would go, Are you, you're going to America, aren't you? And I'd immediately go, yes, yes I am, help. Early on Thursday morning, UK time, I got my flight out of Heathrow, touched down about nearly 10 hours later in Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport. And one of the first things I saw upon exiting the airport and taking my first steps out into Murica was seeing a Hummer drive past. And then I noticed that every fifth car on the road was some combination of Ford Mustang, Chevy Camaro, Dodge Charger, Dodge Ram, Ford F-150, Chevy Silverado. Yeah, you're kind of getting the idea. I realized very quickly where I was. This is America. And I have to say, first off, first impressions of America, pretty good. The Americans I did meet on this trip, all A plus, excellent. Very nice people. As for the pals I did stay with, I cannot say enough good things about all of them. I'm sure pretty much most of them will be watching this video, if only because I'll have sent the link to them and nagged them to watch it. So Cam, Chris, RJ, Steve, Savannah, who are the people I stayed with, you are all the greatest people ever. Thank you all so much for making this experience as not anywhere near as anxious or stressful as I thought it might be. Given how big a thing this was for me, this was the furthest I'd ever been from home, this was the first time I'd been on a plane in three years, having had to stop a certain line of work three years ago because air travel and everything else was so anxiety triggering and stressful for me. It was so refreshing. It was just like, right, I'm here now. I'm ready to have fun. Let's do it. And then we get to the race weekend itself. I did the Friday and the Saturday of this year's 2019 Petit Le Mans race. The Friday was the support race for the Michelin Pilot Challenge, plus practice and qualifying for the main event, which is the Petit Le Mans motor race itself, ran by the IMSA series. So on the first day, that was the order of business, and then on the second day, unsurprisingly, was mainly focused around the Petit Le Mans motor race itself. And all of this went down and has gone down since the inception of Petit Le Mans at the Road Atlanta race circuit in Brazelton, Georgia. I mean, honestly, this track is was designed in Roller Coaster Tycoon. It was not designed by a racetrack designer. That's the only way I can explain the fact that turn one is uphill, and then the turn two and three S's are downhill again into a valley, and then turn four and five are back uphill again, and then turn six and seven are kind of flat, but not really. Then the back straight is sort of up and down a bit more, and then plunges down another thing, left, right, and then back up and over and down again through the flat out final corner. Seriously, it is bananas. Actually, funnily enough, reminded me a lot of my home circuit of Brands Hatch. The facilities, cannot complain about that. There was plenty of food and drink stalls and 
mostly packing water, which I kind of needed because for some reason I thought it was going to be really chilly this weekend. As you can probably tell from my mostly burnt, peeling, stinging face, it's very sunny. And I am still, a few days after getting home, still a rather crispy boy. <laughs> I don't tan, I just burn, I just sizzle, it's not good. But I do not have a bad word to say about the racetrack. The fan zone was awesome, you had stalls from all the major manufacturers and that. Showing off cars, there were simulators, merch stalls and everything else. Speaking of merch, I did pretty well out of that. I mean, this was the most important item on my shopping list for reasons that I'll go into a minute. A Corvette racing flag, which I later got signed by legendary Corvette racing driver, Jan Magnussen. I also got these die casts over here. This special limited edition Porsche 911 RSR in the Coca-Cola livery that they were running for that race and that race alone. And we've also got a little Cadillac DPI Wayne Taylor racing number 10, the case of which I got signed by Jordan Taylor, who like young Magnussen was just chilling out on the grid beforehand, the grid walk before the race. Kind of summed up IMSA as a whole in terms of his attitude towards its fans. The cars all just lined up on the start finish straight on the actual racetrack, all parked up. Some of the drivers and the crew hanging out and you could literally not only walk up to each car, but literally touch the cars. It was unbelievably chill. And that went for the whole weekend, by the way. Whenever we wanted, we could just wander around the pits where all these top level elite sports car racing teams are working on their cars. And us chumps were just wandering around like, hi, hello. Like I wasn't involved in the media. RJ and Chris are very good motorsport journalists. So obviously they had media passes and things like that. Me and the others, we were just there as fans. And yet not a single person came up to me, uh, excuse me, sir, where, where, where's your uh, special badge? You, you need a certain pass to get in here. None of it, none of it at all. We just wandered around, took a look at the cars and you know, all the inner details. It felt very inviting and I really respected that. I think that's very nice. So that was all really cool. And do you know what the best bit is? This, all I'm talking about right now, is all about the cars before they even got onto the racetrack. And then the race car did get onto the racetrack and just listen to this. <laughs> Yeah, folks, just like the racetrack and the elevation changes and everything, something else that cannot quite come across accurately on TV, the noise. There was a lot of it. Let me just put it this way. The moment I first heard the Corvette C7R blast past me at full chat, the entire trip wasn't just vindicated, it was about to go down as possibly one of the most memorable weekends of my life. You feel it in your soul. Your entire chest shakes like someone's just slammed you in the chest like that. You feel it in the ground. You hear it in the distance like some sort of World War II fighter aircraft and you feel the ground shaking. <laughs> it's unbelievable. God, I had a crisis the first time I heard that. A crisis that didn't stop for the rest of the weekend, to be honest. But it will be very remiss of me to say that I was just there for the Corvette and the Corvette was the only good sounding car there. The aforementioned Porsche 911 RSRs were the loudest things I've ever heard in my life. And they were the complete opposite to the Corvettes. And kind of in a nutshell, those two cars showed one reason why I love sports car racing so much. You have all these different classes of cars on the track, the faster prototypes, the slow GT cars, all that sort of thing, you have multiple races going on in one race, but you also have this variety of cars and designs and looks and sounds more than anything. So with the Porsche 911 RSR, contrasting with the Corvette C7R death growl of the gods, you have the Porsche's banshee howling shriek, which I think still is ringing in my ears now. And alongside that, you had the Cadillac DPIs, which ran a similar five and a half litre V8 to the Corvettes, but they had more of a sort of smooth, roar to them, a smooth sort of howl is the best way to put it. You had the various turbocharged engines like the, the Acuras and the 4GTs that had 3.5 litre V6, they had a sort of flat buzz to them. And little things like being up on the inside of the slowest corner on the track, turn seven, and listening to all the cars, blipping down through the gears, hard on the brakes, hearing the sort of squealing of the brakes, and the, the revs, and the, the overrun of the engines and things like that. Everything you see and hear on TV and radio, it, it's so much more in IRL. It is unbelievable. I barely have words to describe it. And I haven't even gone into things like getting an unexpected invite up to the Radio Le Mans booth to hang out with John Hindoff and uh, Eve Hewitt, the responsible adult. That was really awesome to go and visit the basically the commentary booth, the radio station that has, it's synonymous to me. It's the reason I know American sports car racing back in the American Le Mans days and things like that. That's where it all came from. I also got to meet a few other blasts from my past, namely my YouTube past. 
back from the Team Bomb Sports days, I got to finally meet in person David Land and Robbie Noonan, aka Race Day 2011. Guys that I remember coming up with in the YouTube sphere and making videos and interacting with back in, you know, 2014, 2015, 2016 days. We've stayed in touch since then. Getting to hang out with those guys at the track was awesome. And the race itself was fucking excellent. It was a great race. The race itself was basically everything I love about endurance racing in a nutshell. Long green flag stages, some safety cars to bring the field back together, plenty of strategy, plenty of off sequence stuff, plenty of things to be paying attention to at once. So even if one class was being dominated and, you know, saying prototype there was one car that was out leading by like 30 seconds or whatever, you just look to one of the GT classes and something would be happening there. But basically the whole race was really good fun. It was everything I could have wanted it to be. It was endlessly interesting, endlessly exciting. I don't really have words. In fact, ever since I first got to the track on Friday morning, I, I've, I've kind of been so overwhelmed with the whole experience that only proceeded to then get better from there that trying to talk about it and trying to express myself, I'm even getting choked up right now just trying to talk about it. I honestly, there aren't, there aren't words. There just are not. God, I'm so fucking happy I managed to do this. I'm just really happy I managed to do this. And there are so many people who deserve a lot of love and a lot of thanks, a lot of gratitude too for making this happen. This weekend is special for two main reasons. Number one, the fact that I did it in the first place means the fucking world to me. Excuse my language, but that's just how I'm feeling right now. It meant the world to me that I was even able to do it. That anxiety, that anything else did not stop me. And secondly, the weekend itself, irrespective of all of that, was incredible. It was potentially the best weekend of my life. <laughs> Honestly, it was so good. There was a really nice message in our little Discord group chat. Someone had just taken a picture of me editing out and put it in now. I just bought the Porsche and got this little Coke gift bag and everything. And I was just beaming. I was so happy, even though I was massively sunburned already. I was happy, Corvette flag on, me lanyard. Everything was good. And someone just put in the group chat, AJ, for this whole weekend, has just looked like a kid who's woken up on Christmas morning. Yeah. And I still feel that way even when reflecting on the race right now. I don't think there's higher praise than that. Thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you have. Comment down below your favorite bucket list experiences, trips, adventures, motorsport, events, whatever you want to do. Either if you do want to do them or if you have been lucky enough to be able to do them. Tell me about your own experiences. They'll make me smile even more. Subscribe if you are new around here. Remember, I am also streaming over on... It should be Twitch. We're going back to Twitch. <sighs> I'm not getting over this in a while, and I'm not forgetting it for the rest of my life. See you soon, guys.